I'm Larry Souter, and welcome to Souter and Friends. They have been buddies since 1999. They met by chance at a coffee shop just outside of Nashville, Tennessee. Jim Bradford, who is old enough to be his father and then some, came across a disabled little blind boy seated at a table listening to his radio. Jim says the accidental meeting with his new friend H.K. Derryberry was a god thing. They shared their story with me before a live audience. Here is part one of The Awakening of H.K. Derryberry. I saw a little boy sitting at a table by himself listening to a black plastic boombox radio that had been probably dropped once or twice and broken because there were three strips of duct tape holding the batteries in. And I just out of curiosity, I turned to the lady behind the counter and I said, who's the little boy? She said, oh, that's H.K., he's our sweetheart. And I said, well, who's he? She said, well, the lady who sold you the coffee. She pointed to the lady behind the cash register. Her name is Pearl. Pearl can't afford a babysitter, so on weekends she brings H.K. and he sits while she works. And I said, how long does he sit? She said, only from 8 till 5. And what I noticed about the little boy, he had on shorts that morning. It was cool. He had on a dirty white T-shirt with food stains, maybe from breakfast or past meals. But what I focused on was the braces on his legs, so I knew something was wrong with him. And I said, you've got to be kidding. And I offended the lady. She said, well, he doesn't do it every day. He goes to school during the week. And she said it with kind of a hateful tone. And as I started to walk away and walk by this little boy, like I'd always done before, she kind of shouts out and said, he is blind. And I just immediately walked right to his table because it touched me like I'd never been touched before. And I said, hey, buddy, what's your name? I'm HK. What's your name? My name's Jim. Nice to meet you. Well, it's nice to meet you, HK. Where do you live? I live in Brentwood. What street? I live on Harpeth River Drive. What's that off of? Old Hickory Boulevard. What time did you get up this Six morning? o'clock. Then what did you do? I took a shower. Then what? I put on my tennis outfit. Then what? I drove to McDonald's in Green Hills. Then what? We'll stop right there. <laughs> HK, when I met him, could not carry in a logical conversation. I felt like... One of my favorite all-time movies is Groundhog Day. If you saw that movie, Phil Connor, the weatherman, is caught in a time warp. He wakes up every morning, relives yesterday, but he's learned a little bit more about the people in the town. Well, that's the way I felt, although I felt like I was being interrogated by the FBI. (laughs) So after about four minutes, I said, HK, my wife Brenda has a number of things for me to do this morning. I've got to go, but it's been nice to meet you. (laughs) Nice to meet you, too. Hope to see you again soon. Well, me too, and I didn't realize I just committed myself to 18 years. (laughs) And that's the way we met. But I got in my car, I put the cup of coffee in the cup holder, I never took a sip of the coffee. I couldn't take the little boy out of my mind. The next Saturday at 3 o'clock, I'd been raking leaves, and I decided to... I needed another second cup of coffee for the day, but I really wanted to find out if the little boy was at the restaurant. So I drove back to Mrs. Winters, looked through the window, and sure enough, I saw his silhouette sitting at the same table. Hey, sir. Who is it? Hey, hello? Who is it? Who is it? Hey, hey, pal. Hi. Hey, what's up? But I started going back every Saturday, and if he was there, I'd spend 30 minutes with him. The fourth visit, I said, HK, in the winter, my Saturdays do not change. I go through the same routine. I play tennis come home and do little things for Brenda, and that's what I do on Saturdays. And here's the deal. I enjoy talking to you, but I'm not coming back again unless you start answering my questions and you stop asking me, what what did you do next? And I found out how smart he was because he's never asked me those questions again. (laughs) He lived with his father's mother, and they have no social life at all. The only friends they basically had were people that were customers of the restaurant. I found out that his being blind and having cerebral palsy is not because of birth defects, but it's because of the lifestyle of two people. Mary, his mother, was 19 years old. She had a baby at age 15. She's now 19, and she's known William Derryberry, HK's father, for eight months. William is 26, and when he was in 10th grade, he decided that the rowdy lifestyle of his buddies with drinking and drugs was more important than an education, so he dropped out of school in 10th grade. He's working on a farm on July 7th of 1990 from 8 o'clock to 5 o'clock baling hay. Mary gets up. She's six months pregnant. She gets up from the little apartment that they're 
staying in, and she gets dressed about 2 o'clock because the $50 cash he's going to make for working that day will put them that night at the top of the income chain at the pub that they're going to have some fun at. So on her way to pick up William, she stops at a convenience store, fills a cooler full of ice and beer, and meets him at the uh, farm when he gets off. I imagine they probably drank all of the beer before they left. As it would happen, he drove back to get ready. She drove to get there. He buckled his seatbelt, and she didn't. He lost control of the car. They hit an oak tree doing about 65 miles an hour. William was strapped in with his seatbelt. He got a little bruise on his chest and a little cut on his lip. Mary was thrown from the car, and when the paramedics arrived, they realized that she was basically brain dead because she had severe head trauma. They also realized that the unborn baby was still living. Her mother the next morning had a decision to make, and the doctor said, your daughter will not survive. Your grandson is still living. If we deliver, we don't think he will live, but if he does, he'll have a lifetime of medical issues. And your choice is, do you want us to deliver him or do you want us to let him go with the mother? Thank God for her decision. She said, deliver the baby. Now, he turned 27 years old in July of this year. That grandmother has never seen him because she never came back. And then when HK was five years old, his father left him. And so you're seeing a sharply dressed young man tonight, but he has overcome more obstacles in life than most of us will ever face. H.K. Derryberry is also one of five or six people in the world with highly superior autobiographical memory. He can recall the details of every day of his life since the age of three. Find out more on part two of The Awakening of H.K. Derryberry. I'm Larry Souter, and that's Souter and Friends. <laughs>